Hey guys, this is Captain Fruit with Point of Duty, and today I'm going to try something different. I'm going to try a new series. I like to introduce something new once in a while. I don't know if it'll take off or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. And I'm going to call that the top three and bottom three comic books of the week. So, I hope you jump in with me and enjoy. Alright guys, with this video segment, my goal is is to base the top three books of the week that I've read as well as the bottom three books. Now, granted, your, your views are going to be different than mine probably, and this is only based on the ones I've read. I have not read every single comic book for this week. That would take a lot of time and more time than I have, but I did read a good bunch. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm counting them right now. Eight, nine books. So out of the nine, I'm going to tell you the top three in the bottom three that I have read. And maybe just a little bit about that. So first, let's start with the top three books. The, th the books that I think should maybe get your attention. And at the bottom of that list, I did a, this, by the way, is a rating out of ten shields. <laughs> okay? And at the bottom of the top three, I have Ghost Rider number two. And I gave that a 7.2. Three. Yeah, I had to use points because otherwise I'd have a whole lot of ties here. And Ghost Rider number two, the artwork has been pretty good in issue one as well as carries on to be good in issue number two. The story is okay. Nothing super spectacular. But this is a, an, interesting th an interesting story though. As you go with Johnny Blaze on a ride trying to figure out what happened to him. Because he figured out he was sort of locked away in a sort of an odd spiritual prison, if you will. And he got out of that. And he's trying to figure out who put him there, why he's there. And this has a nice little twist where he stops at a hotel and some more information and things ensue there, some acts. But the kicker is the reason to get a higher score is because it sort of showed something that was going to happen. And then they just sort of jumped to the aftermath where I would have liked to have seen the other information of what happened in the story. Now, if you're hearing a little bit of noise too, that's because I'm looking at my notes here because I wrote myself notes and why these scores came because I couldn't remember all these off the top of my head. All right, the next book of the week that I think is deserving of your time is none other than Amazing Spider-Man number 93. And I gave that a 7.5 shields out of 10. Now, this is the ending of the Beyond Story arc. And I thought that the art, once again, was pretty good. And it was an okay story, but I will say I don't like what they did with Ben Riley at the end. That hit it a little bit for me. Uh, once again, I, they're going more of in a cliche route with a character that I'm not a big fan of. But the story was pretty good, because if you haven't been following, uh, the Beyond Corporation was wiping Ben's mind. Now, they claim it was on his own accord, uh, but they mind-wiped him, and it's caused him to lose major points of what made him who he was so that helps differentiate him though from peter parker and that part i do like because how else are you going to differentiate ben from peter they had all the same memories and things and now he doesn't a lot of those have been actually wiped away so that's an interesting thing and i don't want to give it all away so when i say that twist at, at the end for what they do with ben i want you to read that for yourself and maybe you'll like it maybe you'll like that more than i did and the number one book that I think you should read, and this is a miniseries I think that you should read all of, it's number 6 of 12 from DC vs. the Vampires. DC vs. Vampires. I gave that an 8.5. I'm really liking the story here. It's been great. You know, you don't feel that any hero is safe in this book, and that's really, really nice. The negative on it is, I don't 100% care for the artwork. I, I think it could have done better with some different artists. It's not bad art necessarily. It's just serviceable. And I think they could have chosen a different artist. And then I would have enjoyed it more in my opinion. And I gave that once again 8.5 shields out of 10. Now with that said, it you know there was a lot of decent books in the middle of the pack. But let's talk about what I consider the bottom three of the pack. And number three out of the bottom three was Spider-Woman number 21. I've been reading the Spider-Man, I mean Spider-Woman series. Uh, this is issue 21. It is the final issue of this series. They're canceling it. I gave it a 6.5. Once again, that's a 6.5 for Spider-Woman. The, the artwork in this book has been consistently 
okay. Never anything revolutionary, and but it's been okay. And where this issue lost it for me is they kept... Uh, first of all, it was sort of everything thrown together fast. It's I understand they were trying to put a, make it a nice, put a bow on it, if you will, and wrap the whole series together. I get it. But it just didn't have any punch and any impact because they handled it all as a joke. And, and that lost a lot of the tension that you could have had in the ferocity of this book. So what we have is a bunch of the characters that Spider-Woman has fought over the last 20 issues. They pretty much had the majority of them gang up together and come up with a cheesy team and go against Spider-Woman. And it just didn't have a lot of weight to it. And the same jokes, uh, I mean, the jokes were in there, which is okay for that series, I think, but they try a little too hard with the jokes. We had the same problem with Captain Marvel, uh, a little, little too hard with the jokes constantly. So once again, sad to see it go. I, You know, it wasn't a great title, but it wasn't a terrible title. It was just meh. So uh, I'm not heartbroken that it's gone, but I really would like to get some more good written Spider-Woman stories. All right, what's next then is actually a tie with that Spider Woman for the bottom of the batch. Yeah, I had two there. I couldn't differentiate these two. And that's Hulk number five. I'm not really a big fan of where the Hulk is going right now. I also gave this a 6.5. The art is Ryan Otley, and it's okay. It, it, you know, I think it has potential to be really good. I'm that's just not quite where I want it to be for the Hulk book for some reason, but I think that's because of the story. The story just isn't doing it for me. I don't like the, it's like a Hulk is a ship being used and the banner's controlling the power by how much anger he's giving him. It's an interesting concept, but I just don't like where the story is and where the story is going. It just doesn't do it for me. So it it's sort of swarming down at the bottom of the 6.5. So it's, that's, a, that's at the bottom three as well. Once again, tied. Now the next one going up to the crap layer, and this one, it sort of depresses me, because this series has actually been better than I expected. I've been reading it through from issue one. I like this character, already always have. Uh, unfortunately, she's been done dirty with a lot of series that have been absolutely crap, and uh, poor artwork, poor writing, a lot of reboots, and that's Captain Marvel. You know, they, they try to shove how great she is and everything but they have never really done her justice and this series was one of them in a long time that i thought was actually readable and people should give it a chance but issue number 37 isn't a it, they said it's a start a uh, new jumping on point Ooh, if this is your jumping on point i don't know if you'd want to stay on it was a lot better before this i give this issue a six and the reason is is a couple things the art's okay but the story was complete filler. It really didn't have much to the very end of moving the story forward. And it really lacked a lot of substance. It, it was really cheesy. And they kept overusing the same kind of joke over and over again. Pounding you with the same joke that wasn't funny to begin with. So it lacked in the power of the humor. It didn't have any ump. And it really... It, it seems like filler. and it, You could have done the whole story to get into the next section with one page. It just, oh, it, it wasn't good. <laughs> I mean, it went overboard, too, with the women all getting together, dancing and everything. And maybe they're going to say, hey, you're not the audience for this. And maybe not. I mean, it definitely does have a more feminist spin arc to it. Like somebody said that she'd be look better in a swimsuit kind of thing, which is like a throwback to, and smack in the face to everybody that liked the original Captain Marvel black. Well, actually not the original, but the black suit with, with the lightning on it, which is a fantastic outfit. Though I don't mind her new one. I'm one of the few people that don't mind her new one. Her other one was awesome, but that because this one's a throwback actually to the the one she's wearing now is a throwback to the original, which I don't mind. But just the story was not there. So I gave that one only a 6 out of 10 shields. And the worst of the bunch that I would recommend passing over, I gave only a 4 shields out of 10. And this is a one-shot. Batman Phase Clan number 1. The art was good. Yeah, the art was good in it. Yeah. But the story was super predictable and nothing that was special at all. And it was a situation where the Riddler is taking some kind of video game thing 
and hypnotizing people through it, but they didn't give you any of what the potential outcome, how bad that could be. And Batman, you know, couldn't stop it from the outside with his technical skills, which is already a fail there. Uh, leads to, well, we need to have somebody go into the game. So they needed some gamers. So they, uh, Robin came up with the idea of having FaZe Clan go into there. So some of the superheroes and FaZe Clan went in to the game to defeat the Riddler. And it's just... <sighs> everything was cliche there was four people four bad guys and they had to break into groups and defeat the villains to get get things and they did that which once again a huge cliche and then they had to fight the riddler which that was taken down in like one page it, it just didn't have any ump and at the end it was a little silly on batman's end reaction which that part was sort of okay it was a little bit of a chuckle because batman was going to stay in and he wasn't going to go out that night and the reason why is he's going to play video games which yeah, it's just, it's just not Batman. I mean, it was sort of funny. I'll give it a little chuckle, but it definitely is not Batman. So that got my bottom three right there. So once again, in case you missed it, we had the top three being Ghost Rider number two, Amazing Spider-Man number 93, and DC Vamp versus Vampires number six. For the bottom three, I actually had four because two tied with Spider-Woman 21, Hulk number five, Captain Marvel number 37, and Batman Face Clan number four. But once again, those are my choices. What is your favorite comic book of this week? And what is your bottom comic book of this week? I'd like to know. And what have I missed out? What should I read? I will tell you, I read a lot of other ones. I read Iron Fist number two, which that was really close to getting to the top, but it didn't quite make it. Uh, so, you know, that was, that was a good one too. Uh, War for Earth number three I read, which was eh, okay. So there was a lot of other ones, you know, other ones in there in the hunt, but those were my thoughts. What did I miss? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. If you don't mind, help this channel out, like, subscribe, and leave that comment as a huge way to do it just alone. That really, really helps the channel. But on top of that, if you want to help out too, we have a Patreon and subscribe star where you get special videos that only you get, as well as access to music where you can use as ringtones, background music for your videos for as little as $1 a month. You get access to those. I'm looking at maybe creating another music segment as well where you get the fully done because this was ones without uh, vocals because I figure people want them for background music. I might. I'm thinking about doing another tier where you get the complete song with vocals as well. But if you want that, let me know. If not, I understand that too. All right, everybody. Without these people here too that you see, this channel would not be possible. So thank you all for your time. And until next time, keep it frugal.